David Cunningham Dave Garraway was an American television personality. He was the founding host and anchor of NBC's Today from 1952 to 1961. His easygoing and relaxing style belied a lifelong battle with depression. Garraway has been honored for his contributions to radio and television with a star for each on the Hollywood Walk of Fame as well as the Saint. Lewis Walk of Fame, the city where he spent part of his teenage years and early adulthood, early life. Born in Schenectady, New York, Garraway was 14 and had moved with his family 13 times before settling in St. Louis, Missouri, where he attended University City High School and Washington University in St. Louis, from which he earned a degree in abnormal psychology. Before going into broadcasting, Garraway worked as a Harvard University lab assistant, as a book salesman, and as a piston ring salesman. After not being able to successfully sell either, Garraway decided to try his hand in radio. Career Early years Garraway began his broadcasting career modestly. Starting at NBC as a page in 1938, he graduated 23rd in a class of 24 from NBC's School for Announces. Following graduation, he landed a job at Pittsburgh radio station KDKA in 1939. As a station reporter, he went about the region filing reports from a hot air balloon, a U.S. Navy submarine in the Ohio River, and from deep inside a coal mine. His early reporting efforts earned Garraway a reputation for finding a good story, even if it took him to unusual places. After two years with KDKA, Garraway left for Chicago Radio when the United States entered World War II in 1941, Garraway enlisted in the U.S. Navy. While stationed in Honolulu, he hosted a radio show when off-duty, playing jazz records and reminiscing about the old days back in Chicago. After the war, Garraway went to work as a disc jockey at WMAQ in Chicago. Over time, Garraway hosted a series of radio programs such as the 11 to 60 Club, The Dave Garraway Show, and Reserve for Garraway. One oddity Garraway introduced on his radio shows was having the studio audience respond to a song number not by applauding but by snapping their fingers. Garraway also worked to organize jazz concerts, creating a jazz circuit of local clubs in 1947, bringing back interest in this music genre. His fellow disc jockeys voted him the nation's best in the 1948 and 1949 Billboard polls. He won the award again in 1951. Garraway was the first communicator on NBC Radio's Monitor when the program first aired on June 12, 1955. He continued as the Sunday evening host of the news music program from 1955 to 1961. Garraway worked on the air at WCBS Radio in 1964 and briefly hosted the afternoon drive shift at KFI in Los Angeles in late 1970 and early 1971. Television Garraway was introduced to the national television audience when he hosted the experimental musical variety show Garraway at Large, telecast live from Chicago. It was carried by NBC from June 18, 1949, to June 24, 1951. Garraway's relaxed, informal style when on the air became part of his trademark. In 1960, New York Times reviewer Richard F. Shepard wrote, he does not crash into the home with the forced jollity and thunderous witticisms of a back slapper. He is pleasant, serious, scholarly looking and not obtrusively convivial. On television, Garraway was known for his signoff, saying, peace, with an upraised palm. Along with Arthur Godfrey, Arlene Francis, and Jack Parr, Garraway was one of the pioneers of the television talk show. Television commentator Stephen D. Stark traces the origins of the style to Chicago. Garraway, Studs Terkel, and Hugh Downs all hosted relaxed, garrulous, extemporaneous shows in that city in the early 1950s. 
Earlier radio and television voices spoke with an authoritative announcer's intonation, resembling public oration, often dropping about a musical fifth on the last word of a sentence. Garraway was one of the broadcasters who introduced conversational style and tone to television, beginning some broadcasts as though the viewer were sitting in the studio with him, as in this November 20, 1957, introduction for the Today Show, and how are you about the world today? Let's see what kind of shape it's in, there is a glimmer of hope. Legendary pioneering NBC president Sylvester Pat Weaver chose Garraway as the host of his new morning news and entertainment experiment, The Today Show, in 1951. He was joined by news editor Jim Fleming and announcer Jack Lesclier when the show debuted on Monday, January 14, 1952. Though initially panned by critics, Garraway's style attracted a large audience that enjoyed his easygoing presence early in the morning. His familiar co-host, a chimpanzee with the puckish name of J. Fred Muggs, didn't hurt his genial manner, but his concurrent seriousness in dealing with news stories and ability to clearly explain abstract concepts earned him the nickname, The communicator, and eventually won praise from critics and viewers alike. At the same time he did today, Garraway also hosted a Friday night variety series, The Dave Garraway Show, from October 2, 1953, to June 25, 1954. On October 16, 1955, he began hosting NBC's live Sunday afternoon documentary Wide Wide World, continuing with that series until June 8, 1958. Another Friday evening variety show, Dave's Place, was on the air in 1960. He also hosted a radio show, Dial Dave Garraway, that went on the air as soon as today wrapped up each morning. Dial Dave Garraway began in 1946 when Garraway was still working for WMAQ in Chicago. Garraway took today to various locations during his tenure. Paris in 1959 and Rome in 1960, car shows and technology expos, plays and movies, and aboard an Air Force B-52 for a practice bombing run. Through television, Garraway gave viewers access to a variety of people that included politicians, writers, artists, scientists, economists, and musicians. In his role as Today host Garraway acted as pitchman for several of the show's sponsors. Among them were Admiral Television Sets, Alcoa and Sergeant's Dog Food. Most of the appearances were in the form of print ads in newspapers and magazines. By 1960, there was also a board game called Dave Garraway's Today Game. In 1961, Garraway hosted a special filmed program for the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association that traced Billy Graham's crusades from 1949 to 1960. Garraway's laid-back demeanor on TV hid his struggle with depression. Toward the end of his professional career, he began to have disagreements with staff members. Some days Garraway would disappear in the middle of the Today broadcast, leaving colleagues to finish the live program. When Garraway's second wife, Pamela, died of a prescription drug overdose on April 28, 1961, Garraway sank into a deeper emotional malaise. In late May 1961, Garraway resigned, announcing his intention to leave today either at the end of October when his contract was finished or sooner. If possible, he wanted to spend more time with his children. On June 16, 1961, television's communicator said goodbye to the morning show he helped pioneer. Later career after leaving today. Garraway returned to television on national educational television with the science series called Exploring the Universe in late 1962. Later he went back to working in radio, doing split-shift shows called Garraway Am and Garraway PM for WCBS, New York. 
While he was in the publishing business, Garraway began reading various law books in an effort to try to understand what his lawyer was saying. His attorney told him that he had done enough legal reading to pass the New York State Bar exam. On a bet, Garraway sat for and passed the written exam. In July 1969, Garraway launched the daytime talk show on WNAC-TV, Tempo Boston, which he hoped would be picked up for national syndication. The program lasted into early 1970 and never aired outside Boston. The show had promised but management instead decided to fill its time slot with old movies instead of more expensive local programming. After leaving the Boston Airwaves, Garraway traveled to Southern California, hosting a music and talk show on KFI Radio in Los Angeles. He planned to re-enter the television world with a CBS summer replacement show, Newcomers, but the show never made it past the summer of 1971. While in Los Angeles, Garraway began to take acting workshops. He had a role in an episode of the Western series Alias Smith and Jones as a judge in 1972. Garraway appeared sporadically on other television programs without achieving the success and recognition levels he enjoyed on today. He largely remained out of the public eye for the rest of the 1960s-70s although he did re-emerge for today anniversaries. His final such appearance was on the 30th anniversary show, on January 14, 1982. Other media Garraway narrated a compilation of romantic songs performed by the Boston Pops Orchestra, Getting Friendly With Music, in 1956. He also served as narrator for special albums, including 1964's The Great Campaigners, 1928-1960 and 1960's Names From The Wars. In 1960, Garraway penned Fun on Wheels, an activity book for children on road trips. The book was revised and reissued in 1962 and 1964. Toward the end of his life, Garraway planned to write an autobiography. The book never made it past the research stage. The surviving notes, manuscripts, audio tapes, and news clippings were sent to former Today researcher Lee Lawrence. Upon Lawrence's death in 2003, the boxes were turned over to the Library of American Broadcasting, Special Collections, University of Maryland Libraries, where they resided as of 2009. Personal Life, Marriages and Children Garraway was married three times and had three children. His first marriage was to Adele Dwyer whom he married in 1945. The couple had a daughter, Paris, before divorcing the following year. He married former actress and ballerina Pamela Wilde in 1956. They had a son, David Cunningham Garraway, Jr., in 1958. Garraway later adopted Wilde's son Michael from her first marriage. Wilde died of a prescription drug overdose on April 28, 1961. Garraway married astronomer Sarah Lee Lippincott in February 1980. They remained married until Garraway's death in 1982. Interests He was very interested in astronomy, and during a tour of Russian telescopes he met his third wife, astronomer Sarah Lee Lippincott. In his final years, he attended astronomy symposia at Swarthmore College and spent time at Sproul Observatory. Garraway was also an automobile enthusiast and one of his hobbies was collecting and restoring vintage luxury and sports cars. He was especially fond of his 1938 Jaguar SS100, which he also raced in his spare time. Garraway was featured in several automobile commercials, including the first Corvette in 1953 and the Ford Falcon in 1964. Garraway, an amateur drummer and inveterate music lover, lent his name to a series of recordings of jazz, classical, and pop music released in the late 1950s and early 1960s. Among them were Wide, Wide World of Jazz, 1957's Some of My Favorites and 1958's Dave Garraway's Orchestra, An Adventure in Hi-Fi Music, Death, 
In 1981, Garraway underwent open-heart surgery, a result of which he contracted a staph infection. On January 14, 1982, Today broadcast its 30th anniversary special, which featured all of the important living former and current staff members. Garraway, who had recently undergone rehab for an amphetamine addiction, appeared to be cheerful and in good spirits during the show. He also gave every indication that he would be present for the show's 35th anniversary in 1987. A few months later however, Garraway began suffering complications from the infection he'd picked up during surgery. He spent some weeks in and out of hospitals and had an in-home nurse tending to him. On July 21, he was found dead of a self-inflicted shotgun wound at his Swarthmore, Pennsylvania, home. There was no suicide note and Garraway's nurse did not recall him being unusually depressed in the final day of his life. Garraway's son Michael said that his father had been experiencing complications from his heart operation and he had unfortunately succumbed to the traumatic effects of his illness. In addition, he was extremely depressed at his inability to resurrect a TV career, saying to friends and family, I'm old hat, old news. Nobody wants old Dave anymore. His family held a private graveside service for him in Philadelphia on July 28. Garraway is buried in West Laurel Hill Cemetery, Balakenwood, Pennsylvania. The July 22 edition of Today was mainly a remembrance of Garraway. Sidekick Jack Lescalier, news editor Frank Blair, and former consumer reporter Betty Furness offered tributes on the show. Garraway's passing was noted on NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw and Roger Mudd. Commentator John Chancellor was the man who replaced Garraway on Today 21 years earlier. On NBC News Overnight, host Linda Ellabier closed the program with peace instead of her usual, and so it goes because of Garraway's dedication to the cause of mental health. His third wife, Sarah, helped establish the Dave Garraway Laboratory for the Study of Depression at the University of Pennsylvania. Parodies and Fictional Representations Robert McKimson's 1960 cartoon Wild Wild World depicts Cave Darraway, presenting footage from the Stone Age. Mad spoofed him in one issue as Dave Garrow Unway. In Robert Redford's 1994 film quiz show, Garraway was portrayed by Barry Levinson. Listen to Boxcars 711. Dave Garraway narrates names from the wars.